ang pagpapala na ating Panginoon sa Kristo, pag-ibig ng Diyos sa mga at ang pakipagkaisa ng Espiritu Santo na waay sumay niyong lahat. I was asked to share about the gift of obedience. I was ordained 1998 and two years after the ordination, I heard that I will be assigned in the seminary. Nobody likes to be assigned in the seminary. After learning, I went to my spiritual director, the late Father Ben Carlos. Sabi ko, Father Ben, pag ako'y inilagay niyo sa seminaryo, talagang mamamatay ako. And Father Ben simply said, Okay, ipalilibing kita. Ganun lang. So, Year 2000, I started my responsibility in the seminary. And after 15 years, the vicar for clergy called, that was 2015, sabi niya, Dave, gusto mo bang ma-assign sa parokya? Alam niyo, halos hindi pa siya tapos. Sabi ko agad, opo. Sabi niya, saan mo gusto? Sabi ko, kahit saan. After 15 years. And May of 2015, I got an appointment that I will be the new parish priest of Holy Cross Parish in J. Perisal. I cannot deny my excitement. I called the former parish priest and I asked, can I visit the parish? And Father Jason Laguerta was kind enough to say, sige, pasyal ka. Pinasyalan ko po, tinignan ko, tinignan ko ang simbahan, Pero tinignan ko rin ko siya, siya natutulog. Inaamin ko po, meron po akong tatlong need. Need. Not one, but need. Three S. I need space, I need silence, and I need sleep. Mahalaga po yan sa akin. Space. Maybe because I am an introverted person, I need space. Nadidrain ako pag masyadong maraming tao. Nagiging irritable ako. And I need silence. And I need sleep. So binisita ko po, tinignan ko po yung bed. Tinignan ko yung room. At bago ako makapagsalita, Sabi ka agad si Father Jason, kailangan may paggawa itong kwartong ito. Di ka kasya. Hindi talaga ako kasya. May lang yung bed. Hindi ko kailangan malaking bed. Ang kailangan ko mahaba. Mahirap naman yung pagod na pagod ka, nakalawit ka pa. Di ba? No? Hindi naman palaging yung muyo ko. Hindi naman palaging... Hindi naman po pwedeng palagi nakabaluktot. So sabi ko sa kanya, pwede ba bago ako lumipat, ipagawa ko na yung, yung, yung bed, ipagawa ko na yung room, para paglipat ko, okay na. And he was kind enough to say, sige, sige. Sabi ko, paghanap ako ng karpentero. Sabi lang niya, kaya lang, walang pera ang parokya. Sabi ako na bahala, mangungutang na lang ako. May, June, ginagawa yung, yung kwarto, na gumawa rin ng extra room for possible guests. 
And in June, sometime late June, I attended the clergy retreat. Clergy retreat. And uh, in Rome, I was blessed. I was given a chance to attend the clergy retreat in Rome. And lo and behold, June 27, 2015, I got a long distance call from the Cardinal Chito Tagle. Of course, I cannot drop the call. He's the Cardinal. And when I answered the call, immediately I said, Your Eminence, I am in Rome. Para alam niya na long distance call yun. Sabi niya, sige lang, sige lang. Meron lang sana akong itatanong sa iyo. Meron lang sana akong itatanong sa iyo. Sabi ko, ano po yun? Kasi, merong nagre-request na kung pwedeng ma-assign siya sa Holy Cross. Medyo nagdamdam ako. Sabi ko, bakit naman? Yun ang appointment ko eh. Anyway, sabi ko lang, ay ano po ang gusto niyo, Your Eminence? Sabi niya, tawagan kita uli. Tawagan kita uli. Then there was a dead silence because honestly, I was a little bit agitated and disappointed. Not with the cardinal, but whoever the priest is. June 28, His Eminence called again and said, Father Dave, meron akong hihingiin, ha? Pwede bang doon ka ma-assign sa Santa Maria Goretti instead of Holy Cross? My immediate response was, you have my obedience, your eminence. Kahit na yung kalooban ko kumukulo, still I was able to say, be assured of my obedience. And the appointment was changed. It's supposed to be effective July 1. On June 29, I got a new appointment that I will be the new parish priest of Santa Maria Boretti. Sa totoo lang, meron na akong papal blessing. Meron ang nagbigay for being the new parish priest of Holy Cross. Kaya lang, syempre, kailangan sumunod sa kardinal. That is our vows. I promise obedience to my orden ordaining prelate and to his successor. Kaya talking about obedience, honestly, it is easier said than done. It is easier said than done. But let me quote from some words from the saints. Let me begin by quoting Saint, well, hindi pa naman saints, from the author of Im The Imitation of Christ, Thomas Kempis. Sabi niya, it is much safer to obey than to govern. It is much safer to obey than to govern. Kahit tagasunod ka, mas safe rin yun. Bakit? You will have less culpability. Mahirap yung ikaw na mumuno at ikaw nagkamali. Mas malaki ang pananagutan mo sa Diyos. Kahit feeling mo na hindi naman yan ang pinakatamang desisyon, well, sumunod ka pa rin. But we all know that 
based on experience, it is always easy to obey the things you are called to do if you like it. Madaling sumunod kapag ang inuuto sa iyo gusto mo. Gusto mo. Siyempre, ang struggle ay kapag ayaw mo ang pinagagawa sa iyo. And when you talk about obedience, it is not about how you feel, but what is what is something ought to be done. St. Ignatius said, It is not hard to obey when you love whom you obey. It is not hard to obey when you love whom you obey. Naalala ko, nung ako ay parochial vicar sa tagig, sa ina ng mga dukha, sa FTI. Mababait ang mga MBG doon, masisipag. Meron doon isang lector na hindi siya nagsiserve pag weekend, I mean pag weekday, weekend lang. Pero sa Makati lang siya nagtatrabaho. At minsan tinanong ko siya, sabi ko, bakit weekend ka lang nagsiserve? Pwede ka naman mag-serve ng weekday. Hindi ka naman malilate pag galing sa trabaho. At ang sagot niya sa akin, Kasi Father, paglabas ko sa trabaho, inahatid ko pa yung office bait ko sa Marikina. Sabi ko, ba't inahatid mo? Layo. Eh, kaibigan ko eh. Ano ba yung lalaki, babae? Sabi niya, babae. Ah, Bigla ko nang dineretso, nililigawan buwa. Bigla siya tumahimik. Sabi niya, hindi naman father. Pero, it gives joy every time I do it. Can you imagine? From Makati to Marikina, araw-araw. Napakalapit lang ng Makati sa FTI. Pero, ginagawa niya yun. Sabi ko, talaga? At bigla niya sinabi, bakit father? In love ba ako? Ang sagot ko lang ay, hindi. Nagkakawang gawa ka lang. Nagkakawang gawa ka. It is so easy to obey when you are in love. Mahalagang mahalaga yun. Mahalagang mahalaga yun. Kaya nga, ang unang kautusan ay ano, mahalin mo ang Diyos ng buong pag-iisip, buong kalakasan, buong kaluluwa, buong puso. Mahalin mo ang Diyos. Hindi niya sinabing, sundin mo ang Diyos. Mahalin mo ang Diyos. Sapagkat, kung anuman ang iyong ginagawa na nakaugat sa pagmamahal, magaan lang gawin. Mahalagang mahalaga yun. Mahal ko ba ang Diyos? Mahal ko ba ang mga taong naguutos sa akin? Marahil, madali lang na masabi ko sa kardinal, you have my obedience. Kasi mahal ko ang kardinal ko. Mahal ko ang obispo ko. At mahalaga yun. Sister Paustina of the Divine Mercy one time said In one of her dialogue with Jesus, Jesus said, You know that 
you give greater glory by a single act of obedience than by long prayers and mortification. Mahalaga yun. That we give glory to God in a single act of obedience than a long prayer and mortification. We can always pretend in our prayers. We can always babble our prayers, our novenas. We can always pretend that we love what we do. And we say, sacrificio na lang ito. Sacrificio na lang. Kaya nga tinatanong ko yung mga nagre-renew ng kanilang marriage vows. Sabi ko, after 25 years, ano po ba yung 25 years na yan? 25 years ng pagtitiis o 25 years ng pagmamahal? Nalulungkot ako kapag ora-orada sasabihin ng lalaki pag titiis na lang pagay. Sa madil sabi, inaantay mo na lang mamatay. Sayang ang mga bagay-bagay na ginagawa mo dahil ikaw ay nagtitiis at walang pagmamahal. Suriin natin ang ating mga paglilingkod Ito ba'y pagtitiis o pagmamahal? We want to give God or we want to give glory to God. Do not forget that. A single act of obedience give glory to God compared to a long prayer and mortification. Ano sabi ni St. Francis de Sales? Obedience is a virtue of so excellent a nature that our Lord Jesus pleased to mark its observance upon the whole course of his life. And what is that? I have come not to do my will, but of what my heavenly Father I have not come to do my will, but of what my Heavenly Father, the will of His Heavenly Father. God cannot contradict Himself. St. Thomas of Aquinas said, You can never be wrong in obedience. Do not forget that. You can never be wrong in obedience. You can never be wrong in obeying God. It doesn't mean what God was asking is easy. Regardless. Regardless of what God is asking from me. You can never be wrong. In obedience. Many times I have been saying this that our common mistakes or mistake in life is to do the right thing and yet it is not what God wants us to do. Yun ang kadalasan nating pagkakamali. Ang gawin ng tama pero hindi naman yan ang pinagagawa ng Diyos. Pero hindi tayo nagtatanong. Ito ba ang pinagagawa sa akin ng Diyos? Kasi, ang palagi natin sinasabi, wala naman akong ginagawang mali ah. Totoo yun. Pero ang tanong ay, yan ba ang pinagagawa sa iyo ng Diyos? Kung naalaala ninyo, when Peter declared that you are the Messiah, God said, the keys of heaven will be given unto you. What you bound here on earth will be bound in heaven. 
Pagkatapos ni Peter o ni Simon, at that time he was still Simon, throw the nets and caught several number of fish. Ano sabi ng Diyos? From now on, you will be fisher of man. Pero, nung namatay si Jesus at wala pa silang linaw, hindi pa nila nakikita ang muling pagkabuhay ng Diyos, ano sabi nila, ano sabi ni Peter, I will go fishing. Ano sabi ng mga, ng mga kaibigan niya? We will go with you. And by the lake, the same story, the same story. They went fishing and caught nothing all night long. And Jesus from the shore shouted, May huli ba kayo? Ano sabi nila? Wala po. And again, Jesus said, Throw your nets to the right. In the same story, Peter was reminded the first time he experienced that the net was full of fish. This time, 153. 153. Alam po ninyo yung mga Hebrew, they are so particular with numbers. And every Hebrew alphabet has a corresponding number. And uh, you can Google this. The word Ani Elohim, I am God. If you total the corresponding numbers from the letters Ani Elohim, it will give you a total of 153. I am God. But what is wrong or perhaps what are we missing in this story? Sinabihan ka na ng Diyos, from now on, you will be fisher of men. Bakit ka bumalik sa pamimingwit ng isda? Dahil na discouraged ka? Dahil you are at a loss? Ang sagot mo rahil, marahil ay, bakit? Masama bang mangisda? Dati naman ako mangingisda. Hindi. Pero sabi na ng Diyos, from now on, you will be fisher of men. Bago ako magpari, you know that I'm a licensed mechanical engineer. And I have my own PTR number. And every time I sign, napakadali ng 500 pesos, 1,000, 3,000, 5,000, isang perma lang. Kasi ang kailangan lang naman nung nagpapagawa. Perma, PTR number. But I remember this story. Hindi naman nawala yung aking pagiging mechanical engineer. Hindi naman nabura o nawala yung aking PTR number. Pero dahil mahirap yung parokya kung saan ako naka-assign, it's so easy to go back. It is so easy to go back. And I can always justify. And I can always say to God, Lord, kailangan ko lang talaga ng pagdagdag. But I did not. I did not go back. I hold on to the promises of God. I don't want to commit the mistakes of doing the right thing and yet 
It is not what God wants me to do. You can never be wrong in obeying God. Look at Mary. Of course, you know the story of Mary. The fiat of Mary. Be it done to me according to your word. Naintindihan ba talaga ng mahal na ina ang pinagagawa sa kanya ng Diyos? Sa tingin ko, hindi. Naarok ba niya? Natatalos ba niya? Sa palagay ko, hindi. Ngunit, dahil napakalaki ng pagmamahal ng mahal na birhen sa Diyos, kahit hindi niya naintindihan, kaya nga nagtanong siya eh, How can this be? Paano mangyayari ito? Sa gitna ng kanyang pag-alinlangan, naroon ang pagsunod. Naroon ang pagsunod. Kaya nga, kung naalaala ninyo ang kasalan sa kanan, ano sabi niya? Do whatever He tells you. Yun ang sinabi niya sa mga servants. And I want you to remember this picture. Picture this in your mind. Our Lady pointing her fingers to Jesus, looking at you, looking at your eyes, telling you, do whatever He tells you. Not only in good times, but, only in, but also in bad times. Especially this time of pandemic. Do whatever He tells you. Why? You can never be wrong in obeying God. In season and out of season. Again, St. Francis de Sales have said this. Obedience is is a consecration of the heart. Obedience is a consecration of the heart. Chastity is the consecration of the body. Poverty of all worldly goods is the consecration of what you have to the love and service of God. Obedience is the consecration of the hearts. You know, my late spiritual director, Father Ben Carlos, inculcated this in my mind. The moment the priest breaks his vows of obedience, the rest follows. The moment a priest breaks his vow of obedience, the moment he disobeys his bishop, his vow of chastity, his vow of poverty follows. Gano ang ka-powerful yun. Kaya, pag nagsimula na tayong maging pasaway, matigas ang ulo, lahat wala na. Wala na. Everything will crumble. Ano lang ang problema? Today as we celebrate the feast or the memorial of Our Lady of Sorrows, hindi madaling sundin ang Diyos. Hindi madaling sundin ang Diyos. At palagi ko po itong sinasabi. Kung hindi ka pa nasasaktan, baka hindi ka pa nagmamahal. Kung hindi ka pa nasasaktan, baka hindi ka pa nagmamahal. Ang pagmamahal ay nasusukan kapag pinihingi na nito ang mga bagay na hindi convenient sa buhay mo. Kaya nga, kung naalaala po ninyo, when the rich young man asked, what should I do to enter eternal life? 
Ano sabi ng Diyos? Will you honor your mother and father? You will not kill. You, you do not commit adultery. You do not steal. You do not bear false witness. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet thy neighbor's goods. Ano sabi ng binata? I have done this since my youth. You can easily brag. Pero, ano, tinanong siya ng Diyos sa mga bagay na mahalaga sa kanya. Sell what you have. Give it to the poor and follow me. Yumuko ang binata at umalis. Kung hindi ka pa nasasaktan, hindi ka pa nagmamahal. You all know my vocation story. That, that I was a victim of a stabbing case in Moraita in 1981. I survived. God has given me a new life. And my older brother have asked, what do you plan to do? Will you enter the seminary? Will you become a priest? Immediately I've said, why? Should I? Should I? I finished my course. I took the board exam. I passed the board exam. I worked for 10 years. And when I was already engaged, it was the time when God asked the question and told me to enter the seminary. Of course, my first question was, why? Bakit naman ngayon, Lord? Bakit naman? Kung kailan may trabaho na, kung kailan na in love ka na, kung kailan engaged ka na. Pero ganun siguro talaga, Diyos. Madali kasi sumunod kung wala ka namang bibitawan. Masusubukan ang pagsunod kung meron kang tatalikuran. Masusubukan ang pagsunod kung meron kang tatalikuran. Kaya nga po, doon sa mga nasaktan, magandang itanong doon, nasaktan ka ba dahil ikaw ay nagmahal? Huwag kang matakot. Sapagkat sa huli, ang lahat ng bagay ay susukatin sa pagmamahal. Sabi nga ni St. John of the Cross, in the twilight of your life, when you bend your knees before God, God will not ask the question, how much money you have? Where have you been? The question will be, in everything that you do, how much love you have given? How much love you have given? Madali lang naman magtiklop, maglaba, na mga chosable. Lalong-lalo na pag mabait yung kura para po, hindi po ba? Pero, may alam ako mga mother butler na sinisigawa ng kura para po. Tahimik lang. Yung iba lumuluha. O na po, humihingi ng tawan. Please forgive them. Please forgive them. Alam ko po, susukulian ng Diyos ang inyong mga pagmamahal, ang inyong mga paglilingkod. Sa mga parokya ang aking pinanggalingan na mayroong mother butler, 
Salam. Maraming salamat. Ano lang ang paalala? Ano lang ang paalala? Do not fall into the sins of compliance. That you do the things you are doing because you are complying it. Do not fall into the evil of compliance. Because compliance is more evil than disobedience. Compliance is more evil than disobedience. Please, please, do things out of love. Perhaps in closing, in closing, allow me to remind you, our dear Mother Butler, that you are not defined by the things you do. You are not defined by the things you do. Mother Butler is defined by who you are. It is what is in your heart. An obedient heart. A heart that loves. A heart that cares. A heart that is there. Not for the sake of honor. But a heart that is dedicated. In service. And in love for God. The church might, might fail to give you the honor. Don't worry. Don't worry. Hayaan niyo ang Diyos ang sumukli sa inyong mga kagandahang loob. There was a time in my priesthood I was falsely accused by a brother priest. I was so angry. Alam niya naman, pag inakusa ka, ina, ina kusa ka ng, ng kapwa pare, when a brother priest accuse you, and that priest will tell stories, palagi yung pinapaniwalaan kasi sabi ni Father, kahit hindi totoo, nasaktan na ko. Minsan sinabi ko, pag nakita ko ito, sagasaan ko eh. And the good bishop simply said, don't worry. Don't worry. Allow time to tell. I'm sure meron kayo mga ganyan para nasa, nasaktan kayo. Gusto nyo iwan ang inyong mga gawain, isumpa ang mga taong nagdulot ng sama at sakit ng inyong kalooban. But what have I learned? Na-depress ako. Ayaw kong kumain. Ayaw kong lumabas ng kwarto. Ayaw kong magmisa. Ayaw kong gawin ang mga bagay na dapat kong gawin. Puro pagtatanong. Puro pagkagalit. At ang alam ko lamang ay tuwing hinahawakan ko yung door nam. Ang sabi ko lang sa Diyos, ang alam ko lang, Lord, mahal kita at alam kong mahal mo ako. Every day, every day, every time I try to open my door, Every day during those times, I have to say this. Alam ko, Lord, mahal mo ako. At ang alam ko rin, mahal kita. Sana po, mangibabaw ang pagmamahal sa bawat isa sa inyo. At sana maintindihan ninyo kung gaano kayo kamahal ng Diyos. At sana alam nyo rin 
na mahal din ang Diyos ang mga taong mahal ninyo. Napakadaling sumunod kung mahal mo ang nag-uutos sa iyo. The gift of obedience is simply a manifestation of love. Of love. Sana po hilumi ng Diyos sa mga sugat ng mga puso na sinaktan na pagbintangan, inakusa, pinagalitan, yung iba na wala na lang. Ilumin ang Diyos sa inyong mga puso at suklihan ang inyong mga pagmamahal at paglilingkod. Nawa ang araw na ito ng pagninilay, isang pagninilay ng puso hindi lang ng isipan. Na ang pagsunod ay hindi isang gawain, kundi isang magmamahal. Panginoon, pinudulog ko po ang iyong mga anak. Kilala mo sila. Alam mo ang kanilang mga pagtawag, pagluha. Ang kanilang mga kahina at kalakasan. Ang kanilang mga kabiguan at tagumpay. Alam mo rin ang kanilang mga pangarap. Hindi lang para sa kanilang mga sarili, kundi para sa kanilang mga mali sa buhay. Pangarap sa simbahan. Panginoon, kayo na po ang sumukli sa kanilang mga paglilingkod. At sa mga mother butler na pumanaw, nawa po ang iyong mga anghel ang sumalubo sa kanila. Suklian ng pagpapala nawa sila ay mapasapiling mo. Pagkatapos ng buhay dito sa lupa. Kung sino man na may karamdaman na wapoy hilumin mo, pagkaloban mo ng kagalingan, patuloy mo silang gabayan sa lahat ng kanilang ginagawa. Kung meron man silang karamdaman na wapoy panumbalikin mo kanilang mga kalakasan. At kung ano man ang kanilang mga panalangit, Nawa ay maging kalugod-lugod sa iyo. Sa tulong at panalain ng mga banal, lalong-lalo po ng mahal na birhen, gayon din si San Jose, ang tapat niyang esposo, at ang aming patron, Santa Maria Puretti. Pagpalain mo po itong iyong mga anak, ang iyong mga mother butler, pangalan ng ma, at ng anak, at ang Espiritu Santo. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat po sa pagmamahal.